Hi, I'm Rupert Harris. I'm the founder and CEO of Preview Tools. The story starts in 2015 when we were selected to create an interactive exhibition for the artist Ai Weiwei's landmark retrospective at the Royal Academy. All credit to the commissioner, Anthony Lilly. The artist wasn't convinced about the idea of a virtual exhibition, so he reserved the right to withdraw his permission if he didn't like the result. Fortunately, he did, and he introduced us to Julian Assange, who at the time was hiding out in the Ecuadorian embassy. G'day. My name is Julian Assange. I'm the founder of Wikileaks. Uh, I've known Ai Weiwei since 2010, uh, when we were both under house arrest. At 2.28 p.m. on the 12th of May 2008, a powerful earthquake in the Sichuan province of southwestern China caused extensive damage and catastrophic loss of life. Ai Weiwei 360 launched in January 2016 on the day the exhibition closed. It's had over half a million visitors, extending the life and the reach of the exhibition enormously. The storytelling aspect in particular was very effective. Ai Weiwei's art is hard-hitting and cinematic, which meant that the emotional punch of the stories really cut through. Jon Snow also did a fantastic voiceover. But there were drawbacks. It was expensive and time-consuming to make, and filming could only take place at night, which meant that we had to wait until the exhibition had opened, which meant that we couldn't launch the online until after the exhibition had closed. We began thinking about ways in which we could solve some of these problems. We needed a tool that museums and galleries could use to plan and promote and archive exhibitions. It needed to be practical, affordable and reusable, and crucially, it needed to save them time and money. We began reaching out to galleries and museums to find out if there was any interest. And we read a report that Gilbert and George were building a new centre. So we sent an email to the architect Manuel Esara at SERS to find out if there was any interest. Manuel emailed back to say that they hadn't started building yet, but he'd be in touch. Lockdown arrived and we began experimenting with the Unreal Engine to see how good a degree of photorealism we could deliver. Sotheby's were our first client, and working closely with Heath Cooper, their in-house photographer, we, we worked to see to make sure that we could deliver images that were perfectly true to the photographs. We built them our first digital twin gallery space, and Preview Tools was born. Preview Tools is a custom software application for the cultural sector. Use it to design and curate exhibitions, create social media and marketing content, produce showcase videos for customers, or build 3D mock-ups for art fairs and pop-up shows. Preview Tools is built using the Unreal Engine, the world's leading 3D visualization technology, guaranteeing quality and longevity. Our customers include the biggest names in the art market. These spaces are not real, they're digital twins, modelled to the last detail. Learn more about how Preview Tools can be part of your digital strategy, helping you present and share ideas, win business and harness your resources. Preview Tools is a virtual production suite, not a virtual gallery. It enables you to produce video and stills quickly and simply at a price point that's simply not otherwise possible. We began working with other clients, both here and in the US, White Cube, Gagosian, Heather James, Gurjons. And then, out of the blue, I had an email from Manuel, five years to the day since our last communication. I'm Manuel Yesara, co-founder of SERS Architects, and we designed the Gilbert and George Center here in London. We started working on this project in mid-2015, and approximately a year later, 
Rupert got in touch about a potential collaboration. Our main ambition of the project has been seeking to immerse visitors into the unique realm of Gilbert and George throughout a cinematic sequence of spaces and to every built detail. The project was all about making Gilbert and George's art accessible and also to create a permanent London home for their work for visitors from close and afar. The Gilbert and George Center is the ultimate fulfillment and an extension of their art for all ethos. It therefore seemed logical to create a digital twin of the physical space, enabling virtual access for everyone across the globe. The original building dates from 1820 it used to be a former brewery building. In order to be able to convert the building into a contemporary art foundation, we had to add two extensions, one above ground and one below ground, which was a completely new level. We're currently standing at minus five meters below ground, and we had to excavate the volume of half an Olympic swimming pool to achieve this. By combining historic, restored, and contemporary features, the project honors the building's industrial past, but is equally a building of the future. The center hosts three gallery spaces of distinct size and feel, a courtyard with a film room, a reception, an in-house art storage facility, and a separate caretaker's apartment. Using the latest technology has been a fundamental part of our design practice. The building itself uses a number of cutting edge technologies. One of them is a BMS system, which lets you control and fine tune all the building technology components. The second is a sophisticated lighting system, which lets you create different lighting atmospheres and also simulate daylight. And the third is a Bluetooth lighting control system. The building has been designed with sustainability in mind in order to reduce the resources of energy and materials. Some examples of sustainable principles include the creation of the building with a high thermal mass, harvested rainwater, permeable paving, photocatalytic paints. The physical building was rebuilt by Preview in a digital gaming engine with the help of a Matterport scan and a 3D model. It was very important that the virtual replica would be recreated in all of its details, but equally that the room atmospheres would be as realistic as possible. Our objectives of using Preview have been the following. Content creation of exhibitions prior to the launch to the public. The use of the software for creation of upcoming and future exhibitions. And showcase current exhibitions to a global audience to a virtual medium. In addition, we wanted to facilitate access to past exhibitions for study and research purposes. And last but not least, we couldn't resist the temptation to create a digital replica of the living sculptures themselves, which can hopefully enable them to live on forever. I'm Daniel, the Operations Director here at the Gilbert and George Centre. Gilbert and George in 1969 created an iconic piece of art and one that's gone down in art history called the Living Sculpture. One of the many aspects of the project that we loved was the fact that we could film and record Gilbert and George and by using the software created with Preview include them in each of the future stills and films that we create and this idea of Gilbert and George living on forevermore in our films and stills. We are always in our pictures like everyone is uh, in their letters. Whoever they write to, they will always sign it with their name, whether they write it to their mother or the bank manager. It is always a letter from them. And in our case, our pictures are love letters from us to the viewers. It was quite extraordinary the day that we were, we were walking the streets of London in the evening and we found out more and more that we could be the art and the subject of our art. And that's when we became the living sculptors. 
We are constantly being asked about legacy. It is not a thing we think about in that way. Uh, we, we, we prefer the term legover. But if we are thinking of legacy, then yes, we want to live forever. Everyone would like to live forever. You can walk the streets of any city in the world and stop a stranger and say, Charles Dickens, whether they've read a book or not, something of that dead man's message in life will come into their mind. Or if you say Vincent van Gogh, whether they've seen a show or a book of his pictures, doesn't matter. Something of that dead man's life will enter their life. That is the force of culture. The Gilbert George Centre opened on the 1st of April, and they've been using preview now for a couple of months. So we're going to hear from another customer who's had it a little bit longer, since 2021. Hello, I'm Lawrence Charles, Head of Digital at the National Gallery. So here at the gallery, um, we began our journey of investing in digital in, in sort of 2017, 2018. And whilst we were on that journey, uh, investing in a team and building up um, new uses of digital, um, like everybody, lockdown affected everyone quite hard. And we became a digital first gallery. Luckily, we were in a very good position for that already. And what we noticed during that period was our virtual tours became really, really important to people, how they could connect with the gallery, how they could see what was going on and keep that connection to art and places that they loved. But those virtual tours were quite old. Um, they were done in, in ways that maybe wasn't particularly engaging. And so what we decided to think about over that period is, like, well, how can we start to use some of these new tools? And like everybody, um, looking at these new tools to find ways of giving people a much more richer experience and learning from other sectors in terms of how um, what type of software might be available um, for us to do this. And obviously, the gaming sector and the gaming technology is something that we looked at. Through that process, preview tools is something that we started to, to look at and finding ways that uh, we could use new gaming technology, use the new models that we might create at the gallery, but also work at speed and try and uh, build that into our production schedule and find simple ways that this was going to impact on our production and impact on what we're producing in terms of content. galleries we might do shoots in the galleries with the real paintings and that takes a lot of effort and that requires a lot of logistics and what we started to explore with preview tools was the richness of the models that we've created using uh, creating them in Unreal Engine and then using the preview tool software to create films allowed us to really speed up that process um, the quality that we can now get of putting in our paintings and the quality of those re reproductions into these virtual spaces and then how they're used for content creation was something that was really attractive. Um, we didn't have to think about how to bring in equipment to do shoots. The time and the speed and the speed we were able to, to work at meant that we could create these new environments to talk about our content, but also to start thinking about different contexts. Can we create new different type of experiences or different paintings next to each other so we can talk about them in new ways? A rainy afternoon in Paris. We find ourselves in a busy Parisian street. We're surrounded by people and a canopy of umbrellas. Renoir created this painting in two stages. We can tell because of the changes in women's fashion. So the process of getting these models created actually is, is something that, that we're quite excited about because it's been actually quite a quick process. Um, there are many discussions around how detailed we might need to be or whether it's a, an archival scan, but for what we need here and what we're creating, we don't need to go that far. Um, we are able to have good dialogue around the level of detail we need to go to to create that believable experience. Um, that could be really straightforward. It could be just representations of the gallery. It could just be those paintings on the walls as we do in the physical space. But we do feel there's something more here and I think we can only start to build the assets around us and start to think more creatively around them. So we're ready for whatever the future of the virtual museum or the future of, of technology is going to throw at us. Um, we need to have those resources to hand. Building models of the gallery allows us to start to play in this space. Having our paintings in really high quality um, reproductions so that we can drop them into these type of spaces is where we need to be. Um, and how we then use those assets to create new rich experiences, um, we can just be ready for the future. What's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? Is it a monster? What's that coming over the hill? Is it a monster? Is it a monster? So 
one of the preconceptions really about doing virtual, virtual experiences like this or kind of thinking about digital in general has always been this tension between the physical and the digital visitor. I think what we're getting to now is a situation where, especially for us, we're less concerned about that. The richness of the experiences we can create and what we mean in terms of our virtual visitors, do they necessarily need to translate into a physical visit? Obviously, coming to the gallery and seeing the paintings is hugely important and nothing can really totally beat coming to see the paintings. However, the richness of the engagement you can now have and the quality of the re reproduction of the paintings means that it's, it's a different experience and it might mean that at some point you come to the gallery but it's no longer thought about as a secondary thing. The gallery obviously has a limited capacity, um, people are not travelling as much and so we know that people will actually now start to consume content like this and that's one of our ambitions is to, is to how we can tell, take the gallery's stories much wider providing for a global audience and start to think about ourselves as a global media organisation. So storytelling obviously is at the heart of everything that we do here and tools like this really help us to explore that in new ways. Um, we have a large social media following. How can we engage those people on a regular basis with different types of contexts and telling the stories of the paintings in new ways? Whether that's from our curatorial staff or our scientific staff, we can actually bring that into these new formats in such a rich and compelling way um, that means that we can keep up with demand. We can make much more content in a shorter space of time. So we've had this particular software um, in use in our, within a team for the last year and a half and, and essentially that's really been around producing um, social media content which has been incredibly successful. Um, where we are starting to look at it now is how can we create slightly, slightly longer form content? Can we build different types of exhibitions and start to tell a more richer story um, for slightly longer periods? One of the things we've really expanded on over the last year and a half as well is, is our digital event. Um, we do think that these types of tools can really start to engage people, our remote audiences. Um, it's something that we're thinking about in terms of how we build a greater global reach um, for the type of gallery experiences we want to create and the sort of stories we want to tell. So what does this all mean for the gallery in terms of our audiences? Well, and how they reacted to it, I think has been hugely positive for us. Um, one thing is what is great to know is that people don't necess necessarily notice when we're doing a virtual gallery, they're actually just embedded in it. They're, they're believing the space and they're, they're not thinking that it's um, getting in the way of their, their online visitor journey or how they're con uh, consuming the content. And so that's really exciting is that we're starting to create these experiences that, that have um, a really rich impact for people. Um, our digital across uh, the board has been really positive for our audiences, especially in terms of the remote engagement. Um, we receive lots of feedback from people who can't get to the gallery and therefore we, we know that using these tools and using this way of engaging people is the way to go. So where we are now is starting to think about what other potential uses we have for um, virtual production and software like this. And um, learning obviously is something uh, is a huge important thing for the gallery. We've done a lot of um, co-created projects in the last few years, working directly with audiences. And we do think that tools like this are really helpful in, and could be potentially really helpful in um, the creation of content with our audiences and how they will learn about the paintings in new ways by actually being able to either create their own virtual galleries or to be able to simply create their own films where they are in control of kind of uh, how they want to talk about them and we think there's a huge amount of potential for that. <laughs> 